If how you think and how you feel creates your state of being and you keep thinking the same thought that keeps producing the same emotion, that same emotion is influencing how you're thinking. You're hardwiring your brain and conditioning your body emotionally into the past, yes? And if you do that enough times, thinking and feeling in the same way, the body becomes the mind of that emotion. Now the servant has become the master and the body's running the show, yes or no? And so then if the body then has become the mind of that emotion, then to change then would be, great, be becoming greater than your body, yes or no? And if your environment has that much influence on how you're thinking and feeling, then to change then is to be greater than your environment, yes or no? And if you're waking up every single morning, coming back to your senses, looking at the person next to you saying, oh my God, who is that? How did I get here? Jeez. Wait, wait, let me think of all my problems. Okay, I'm starting to feel like myself. Let me get my cell phone. Let me check. Okay, now I'm feeling like myself. And then you get up and you go through the same routine behaviors in your habitat. You have the vision of the toilet and the next thing you know, you're in front of the toilet. Then while you're on the toilet, you have the vision of the coffee maker and there you are, you're in front of the coffee maker. And then while you're drinking your coffee, you have the vision of the shower and there you are in the shower. And while you're in the shower, you get super creative about the clothes you're gonna wear and next thing you know, you're dressed. And your body is always following your mind, but it's following it to the known. Are you with me still? And let's just say you drive to work the same way and see the same people and go to the same grocery store and buy the same food and watch the same television shows. And then you get in front of the mirror at night and you put your lotions and potions and creams on and floss the same way and brush your teeth and you go to bed and you wake up in the morning and you're doing the same exact thing, yes or no? Would you agree then we can take your past and lift it up and set it on your future? Yes or no? Now that's karma, that's it. That's karma right there. And so then if you've done that enough times, a habit is a redundant set of automatic, unconscious thoughts, behaviors, and emotions that's acquired through frequent repetition. A habit is when you've done something so many times, your body now knows how to do it better than your mind. Are you with me still? So if you wake up in the morning and you're doing that, would you agree then your body's on autopilot? And it's dragging you into a predictable future based on what you did in the past. And you're unconscious, yes or no. And I assert that when you are not in the present moment, you're running a program. So don't take anything personally from somebody because they're just running a program as well. Are you with me still? So then, think about this. Would you agree then that if you are going to heal your body by thought alone, to create some new experience in your environment by thought alone, to create some new future that's no longer your past by thought alone, then you would have to become thought alone. Yes or no? Yes. Come on. Yes. So then would you agree then if your environment is so strong in conditioning you into the past, would you agree then maybe it'd be a good idea to sit down at the beginning of your day, close your eyes and disconnect from your external environment? Yes or no? So then if you're seeing less things in your external environment because you've closed your eyes, all of a sudden now, your environment isn't going to control how you think and feel. Yes or no? And what if you were to play soft music in the background or put earplugs in and diminish more sensory information coming in from the environment? Would you agree you'd start putting more attention on your inner world instead of out on your outer world? And what if you said to your body, hey, sit right here and stay right here. Don't you get up yet until I tell you it's time to get up. If you believe that your thoughts have something to do with your destiny and you can't think greater than how you feel or feelings have become the means of thinking, by very definition of emotions, you're thinking in the past. And for the most part, you're gonna keep creating the same life. So then people grab their cell phone, they check their WhatsApp, they check their texts, they check their emails, they check Facebook, they take a picture of their feet, they post it on Facebook, they tweet something, they do Instagram. Uh, they check the news and now they feel really connected to everything that's known in their life. And then they go through a series of routine behaviors. 
They get out of bed on the same side, they go to the toilet, they get a cup of coffee, they take a shower, they get dressed, they drive to work the same way, they do the same things, they see the same people, they push the same emotional buttons, and that becomes the routine, and it becomes like a program. So now they've lost their free will to a program, and there's no unseen hand doing it to them. So when it comes time to change, the re redundancy of that cycle becomes a subconscious program. Most people then wait for crisis or trauma or disease or diagnosis, you know, they wait for loss, uh, some tragedy to make up their mind to change. And my message is why wait? And you can learn and change in a state of pain and suffering, or you can learn and change in a state of joy and inspiration. And I think right now, the cool thing is that people are waking up. The moment you start feeling abundant and worthy, you are generating wealth. The moment you're empowered and feel it, you're beginning to step towards your success. The moment you start feeling whole, your healing begins. And when you love yourself and you love all of life, you'll create an equal. And now you're causing an effect. And I think that's the, the difference between living as a victim in your world saying, I am this way because of this person or that thing or this experience. They made me think and feel this way. When you switch that around, you become a creator of your world and you start saying, my thinking and my feeling is changing an outcome in my life. And now that's a whole different game. And we start believing more that we're creators of reality. If you're not being defined by a vision of the future, then you're left with the old memories of the past and you will be predictable in your life. If you can sit your body down and tell it to stay like an animal, stay right here. I'm going to feed you when we're done. You can get up and check your emails. You can do all your texts, but right now you're going to sit there and obey me. When you do that properly and the, you're not eating anything or smelling anything or tasting anything, you're not up experiencing and feeling anything. You would have to agree with me that you're being defined by a thought, right? So when the body wants to go back to its emotional past, and you become aware that your attention is on that emotion and where you place your attention is where you place your energy. You're siphoning your energy out of the present moment into the past and you become aware of that and you settle your body back down in the present moment because it's saying, well, it's eight o'clock. You normally get upset because you're in traffic around this time and here you are sitting and we're used to feeling anger and you're off schedule. Oh, it's 11 o'clock and you usually check your emails and judge everybody. Well, the body's looking for that, that predictable chemical state. Every time you become aware that you're doing that and your body is craving those emotions and you settle it back down into the present moment, you're telling the body it's no longer the mind, that you're the mind. And now your will is getting greater than the program. And if you keep doing this over and over again, over and over again, over and over again, just like training a stallion or a dog, it's just going to say, I'm going to sit. And the moment that happens, when the body's no longer the mind, when it finally surrenders, there's a liberation of energy. We go from particle to wave, from matter to energy, and we free ourselves from the chains of those emotions that keep us in the, in the familiar past. And so if you think 60 to 70,000 thoughts in one day, and we do, and 90% of those thoughts are the same thoughts as the day before, and you believe that your thoughts have something to do with your destiny, your life's not going to change very much because the same thought leads to the same choice. The same choice leads to the same behavior. The same behavior creates the same experience and the same experience produces the same emotion. And your body is going to buck and kick like an unbridled stallion. I'm busy. I got a lot to do. I got, I got emails to check. I got meetings to go to because you programmed it that way. Yes or no? And every time you say to the body, stay, are you telling it? It's no longer the mind that you're the mind. Yes or no? And now the will is becoming greater than the program. Yes or no? And all of a sudden, if you became conscious that you were angry or emotional or suffering and you became aware that that emotion was keeping you into the 